In this video, we're taking an in-depth look at Lightroom on the new M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I'll be running tests with this year's mid-range model and comparing it against the previous 2019 mid-range 16-inch MacBook Pro. I'll be comparing how fast editing a photo catalog is, we'll open up a bunch of things to max out the RAM and see how each MacBook performs under pressure, then we'll import, build previews, export, and compare those times, and much, much more. If you're a photographer seeing if you should buy the new M1 Pro, this video is for you. Hey there, if you're new here, my name's Chris. I teach photography and creative business here on YouTube. Today, we're diving into Lightroom on the new M1 Pro and doing some head-to-head -head comparisons to see how much faster these machines are than last year's models. If you want to jump ahead to any of these tests, I've got some timestamps up on the screen right now. We're really going to get into the nitty gritty and compare editing speeds, brushes, even editing with 20 videos playing in the background. We're also testing importing, building one-to-one -one previews and exporting. At the end, I'll be talking about RAM considerations and if 16 gigabytes is enough for most people. Let's start by getting into the usability of Lightroom. In my first look video, I got a lot of comments asking me to compare the actual usability and editing speeds of the new MacBook Pro. Import and export times are important, but that can also be something you leave the computer to do while you go do something else. How does Lightroom perform when editing photos? I know everyone has a different workflow, everyone takes different photos, so it was hard to come up with a test that would represent everyone here. I think what I came up with is a pretty good example though. So I've got a Lightroom catalog with 31 photos here. These were all taken on my Sony a7R4. They're 61 megapixel images and about 120 megabytes each. I'll be editing five with some pretty basic adjustments as well as adding a couple masks here and there. I'm doing my best to edit all the photos as I normally would. This test isn't perfect but I think it will be a great way for you to see the differences in speed here. I'll be showing the screen recording side by side, the old laptop on the left and the new one on the right. Both of these laptops have the latest version of Lightroom installed, 11.0. I'm gonna put all the laptop specs up on the screen here. My old laptop was a six core i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of SSD and four gigs of graphics. My new laptop is a mid-range M1 Pro with 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU and 16 gigs of RAM with a one terabyte SSD. All right, let's get into these tests. In this first test, I'm going through the images in the develop module. At the bottom, you can see when the position in the film strip changes, followed by the preview changing. Here you can see the M1 Pro MacBook is flawless with virtually no lag, while the older laptop is slightly delayed. This new MacBook has ultra fast SSDs and these 122 megabyte files are loading super fast. Already, we're seeing a big difference between the two, so let's get some edits going. In this first test, the only applications I have open are Lightroom, QuickTime for screen recording, and Activity Monitor. Like I said, we're editing the same exact five photos here. We'll be using the same set for all these usability testing that I'm doing here today. As you can probably tell, I'm experiencing virtually no lag on the M1 Pro MacBook. My old laptop is pretty much flawless here as well. Again, I've got no other applications open, so the overall load on the computer is pretty low here. I did notice a slight lag on my older laptop, but that's pretty negligible. So clearly we're seeing pretty similar results here in this first test. Neither are lagging, which is not surprising. When I apply a mask, there's a slight lag on the older laptop. I've always experienced that. On the other hand, the newer M1 Pro MacBook has zero lag when applying masks. For this test, the only noticeable differences are jumping from image to image and applying masks. The old laptop has been keeping up, so let's throw in some hurdles. All right, so for this next test, we're opening up Google Chrome and loading not one, not two, but 10 videos playing simultaneously in different windows. We're also running Final Cut Pro in the background on both of these. This is really gonna stress the entire computer and we're gonna see how Lightroom performs under these conditions. I know my old laptop is gonna lag a lot here, but let's see if we can get the M1 Pro to lag at all. We've got Peter McKinnon's latest video loaded up onto 10 windows on both of these computers. Let's check it out. First things first, let's see how jumping in between photos is. My old laptop is lagging a lot right now. Not surprised here but the M1 Pro is still going through the photos flawlessly. There might be a hint of lag, but it's not really that noticeable. Let's see how these laptops edit. We're doing the same exact five photos again. I'm trying to edit them both in the same way as last time. I forgot to crop this first one right at the start, but that's all right, as long as it gets done. So now we can really start to see the difference in performance. In Activity Monitor, you can already see the RAM being eaten up. A decent amount of swap RAM is being used on the M1 Pro, but there's no slowing down in performance. The M1 Pro is flawless here. It's acting just like it was with no applications open. I'm pretty impressed considering it's only got 16 gigs of RAM. My old MacBook with 32 gigs is struggling right now. There's some really noticeable lag editing and especially scrolling through the editing menu. You can see how jumpy it gets. Being able to instantly see how your changes affect the image is huge when you're editing a lot of photos. The M1 Pro is performing flawlessly here. I can't really say the same thing about my 2019 MacBook Pro. 
I really want to get this new laptop to struggle, so let's just open 10 more windows with the same video. I'm just trying to get this new computer to struggle at least a tiny bit. I'll keep the 10 windows on my old MacBook since it's already huffing and puffing. All right, so 20 windows are open and we're not seeing any difference in performance. That's just insane. Everything is pretty much instant. Looking at Activity Monitor, we've got more RAM being used up, but this computer is handling it really well. When I was thinking up these tests, I was hoping I could at least get some lag out of the M1 Pro, but it's really handling Lightroom really, really well. I think adding an extra 5K monitor into the mix might change that though. Let's try it out. If you're getting any value off this video, please drop a like below. I love making these and your support helps me make more of these videos. If you wanna stay notified for future videos, please consider subscribing. All right, so for this final usability test, we've hooked up the laptop to my external monitor. I'm using an LG Ultrafine 5K monitor. That resolution is a lot to handle, so let's see how these computers perform. I'm keeping the 10 tabs open on the old laptop and I'm keeping the 20 tabs open on the new M1 Pro because let's face it, it needs a handicap. Let's see if we can get this new laptop to have any lag while editing on this final test. So as expected, the old laptop is struggling hard here. Edits are coming along really slow and it's just not a fun time. The new M1 Pro is still working flawlessly. I honestly don't really notice the difference between no applications open and 20 videos playing plus an external 5K display. This computer is an absolute machine. The difference between these two laptops is really night and day in this test. Sorting through these photos, we can see a slight lag on the M1 Pro and a significant delay on the old laptop. We all knew this new computer was gonna be faster, but it's crazy to see just how much faster it really is. All right, so we've got some pretty definite results here. With no applications open, Lightroom is pretty similar on both, but once we start opening applications, adding stressors to the computers, the M1 Pro just takes the cake. It performed flawlessly with 10 videos playing, 20 videos playing, and 20 videos playing while connected to a 5K display. Let's talk about fan noise during these tests. My new laptop sounded like this. Silence. And my old one, well, it sounded like this. I couldn't even hear the fans turn on during any of the tests with the new laptop. It's crazy how efficient the chip is and how good the thermals are. The new laptop design is slightly thicker, which adds a lot of room for airflow. When you knock on the outside of the case, it feels like there's a little hollow on the inside, meaning air can escape. The old laptop feels a lot more dense and has a lot less breathability. A more efficient chip and a better airflow means this new laptop is gonna be silent. I've been using it for over a week and have yet to even hear the fans turn on. I've got one more usability test and that's using masks and specialty brushes. I know a lot of people use brushes to enhance their photos and I love using them in my landscape and my cityscape work. Same as before, I'll load up the same photos side by side and we'll see how the brushes perform on each computer. As you can see, I've already got 13 mask layers here, so this is a pretty well built up file. I'm going to be increasing the exposure a lot on this brush so that we can clearly see what's happening in the image. To no one's surprise, the M1 Pro is not lagging at all here. Brushes are super smooth on this computer. The brush is also pretty smooth on my old laptop. When I start to go crazy with it, we just get a little lag, but that's not bad at all. All these usability tests are, in my opinion, the best way to see if this MacBook is for you. Import and export times are important, but you can do other things while that stuff is happening. I will say, after testing the import and export times on this new M1 Pro MacBook, I was blown away. Let's have a look. For this test, I imported 124 megapixel photos for my Sony a7 III. These are about 50 megabytes each. I imported these with minimal previews, then I built one-to-one -one previews on top of that. And finally, I applied a complex preset with some adjustments and noise reduction to all 100 photos and then I exported them. The M1 Pro finished the import in 35 seconds, built previews in a minute and 8 seconds, and export everything in 2 minutes and 54 seconds. Insanely fast performance out of this machine. Meanwhile, the old MacBook Pro imported in a minute and 4 seconds, built previews in 2 minutes 23 seconds, and exported everything in 7 minutes and 13 seconds. Now these are some insane results. In every category, the new MacBook Pro was twice as fast. That kind of increase in speed is pretty remarkable. Personally, this can be huge for me when I'm doing time lapses. I should mention that the fan was going full speed on the old laptop as well. I couldn't even hear the fan on the new M1 Pro. The craziest thing about all these tests is my new laptop has half the RAM of my old one. When we were trying to really stress test with the 20 videos playing, the M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM completely demolished the old laptop with 32 gigs of RAM. The combination of unified memory and the speed of the SSDs for swap memory has made a huge difference in what's possible with just 16 gigs of RAM. I initially bought the 16 gigabyte RAM model thinking I would have to upgrade to 32 because it wasn't enough. I was wrong. I'm sticking with 16 gigs of RAM on this machine. I'm super happy with the performance and I don't actually feel like I need more for the work that I'm doing. Okay. Let's break down all the results from today. In our first test with no applications open, Lightroom performs really similar on both machines. The only difference being jumping from photo to photo and applying masks, but it was hard to tell a difference then. Next, we opened up 10 videos in Chrome. That's when the old Intel computer took a dive. There was a noticeable drop in performance and editing became slow and laggy. 
The M1 Pro, it didn't suffer at all. We then tried to get the M1 Pro to lag by doubling the amount of videos playing to 20, and still there was no drop in performance, and no fans turning on either. Finally, we used both machines and we edited on a 5K external monitor, and the old laptop, it really dropped in performance there. The M1 Pro was still good as new. It felt the same as our first test where there were no other apps open. There may have been a slight delay when switching from image to image, but during the actual edits, there was virtually no lag. I was really impressed with that. In our brush test, both computers were pretty much the same, the M1 Pro being just slightly better. The M1 Pro was twice as fast when it came to importing, building previews, and exporting. This test was really a remarkable jump in performance. Twice as fast is huge. Now the question is, if you're a photographer, should you get this computer? I say absolutely. If you're making any money from photography, it's a no-brainer to get this. The time you'll save will allow you to do more shoots, get more clients, and ultimately make more money. If you're not making money, but you're in the market for a new laptop, this is definitely a great time to upgrade. Intel models are going to lose their value super fast, and I think the M1 Pros are going to retain their value really well. I appreciate you watching till the end. I know your time is valuable and I'm grateful you decided to spend it here. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel and allows me to make more of these. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.